Hi there and welcome to our first snow day of the uh, spring 2016 semester, at least the first snow day that we've had in terms of a Monday class. I know there have been a couple of other classes that have been canceled already um, and we're only on the 8th of February at this stage, um, but this is the first one that we are losing. There's a couple of things that I want to do here today. Uh, this is basically going to be an introductory video that would be normally the first five or ten minutes or so of class where I would sort of go over what's coming up and, and what we've got on the go and um, in this case I will also go through and outline for you what it is that you need to have completed uh, over the course of the next week or ideally actually tonight or tomorrow night in lieu of missing class so I'll actually go through Blackboard and show you what you need to actually uh, undertake uh, over the next uh, few hours so um, to begin, okay, the first thing I want to do is take a little time to go over the schedule again as we've got coming up. So I'm going to go in here and bring up our syllabus for the course and use that as a way of uh, looking at it. So scrolling down now to the uh, schedule that we've got here. Um, obviously this class, February the 8th, we are missing because of the... Uh, inclement weather um, so we have our snow day today but that still means that your literature research strategies assignment or your literature search strategies assignment is due today um, we are meeting next week on the 15th and the journal article reviews are due on the 15th then if you scroll ahead on the 27th or sorry the 22nd uh, we were initially scheduled to meet on that particular week, and your annotated bibliographies are due on that particular week. Um, I say initially scheduled because, as I mentioned to you guys in that first class, uh, the reason why I'm not continuing on with you through 690 and 691 is because I will be leaving the university in August. Um, I'm currently in the process of uh, going through job interviews at other institutions and as it happens on the 22nd I will actually be flying off to one of those interviews uh, an interview at an institution back home in Canada so for the 22nd we will actually be having a class online again similar to what we're doing today so this here should give you some good practice as to the types of things that we will be doing that week um, what will typically happen is on Sunday, I will probably have, uh, Saturday or Sunday, I should have your journal article reviews graded by then so I can send you feedback on them. And at that stage, I will also send out the information that you'll need for that class on the 22nd. Now, while it will be primarily like what we're doing today, uh, there will be a couple of things that I will have you do a little differently. Um, we'll be using some of the other features that Blackboard has uh, to be able to extend some of the activities uh, beyond just what you're going to be doing this week. Um, so again, on the 22nd, we will not be meeting um, because I am, as I mentioned, heading off to a job interview, which means that we will be meeting on the 15th and then we will be meeting again on the 29th. As it stands right now, even though we are moving two of those classes online, uh, the one that we have today because of the weather and then the one that we have on the 22nd, my plan is still to keep the schedule as it currently is, although I will mention right here, you'll note on the 7th we were not scheduled to meet initially. Um, keep in mind that we may need to meet that week depending upon whether or not we fall behind based on these two weeks. Essentially, if folks are able to get the content and or I'm able to work with folks individually uh, so that essentially you guys aren't disadvantaged by the fact that um, you have to you know go through this week um, online and that you have to do the week uh, of the 22nd material online. Um, you know, if I'm confident that we're still essentially where I want to be uh, by that stage, then we will not meet on the 7th as planned, and that's my current plan right now. But I will note that date as a possible makeup date if we end up falling behind and if folks, 
if I don't think essentially that you guys are getting as much out of these online presentations as what I hope that you will be. Um, so that's the schedule looking forward, and I'll remind folks about that again when we meet next week on the 15th. Um, but again, reminder that next week on the 15th is when your journal article reviews are due, and I'll talk a little bit about those in a second. Um, and then the following week is when your annotated bibliography is due, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that next week. Speaking of next week, one of the things that I am planning on doing next week in the lead up to you guys starting to begin writing your actual literature reviews and really starting the first bit of writing towards your thesis, um, in previous semesters what I've done is I've had uh, some of the former thesis students, so some of the folks that have gone through 689, 690, and 691, or at least folks that were in 691 at the time, come in and provide some advice and guidance and you know wisdom from their perspective, from that student perspective, on this process and how they went about it. And in the past, I have asked those students these five questions. Now, what I plan to do this semester, only because one of the difficulties I had the last time I taught 689 was, um, you know, like yourselves, these folks are um, educators that are out working in the schools, and for many of them, they were at the stage in their academic careers where they had finished their Certificate of Advanced Study and, and their 092, so they really had no reason to come down to Sacred Heart anymore, and many of them, like many of you, were living 15, 20 minutes, a half hour, an hour, some as, some as many as two hours away from the university. So what I've decided to do is next week I am going to um, have Skype or Google Hangouts with a bunch of former thesis students. I will ask them these five questions, and I will record the responses to these five questions and make them available to you in Blackboard. What I'm asking of you is that if you have any other questions that you have from a student perspective, what would those questions be? Because by doing this in a recorded fashion to save uh, these guys the trip down to Sacred Heart that they don't need to make anymore, and also as a way to not have to ask them to have to do this every semester, uh, by recording these, the disadvantage is they're not happening live, so I can't look to you guys in the room and say, okay, are there any questions that you guys would have of Jen or John or Roseanne or Laura or um, Alexandra or one of the former students that I've brought in? Uh, so I'm asking you now in advance, are there any students or any questions, sorry, that you would have of these former thesis students so that I can ask it of them when I chat with them next week? Um, so what I'm going to ask, because I'm going to try to schedule these over the weekend and leading into next week, if you do have a question that you would like these folks to answer, please email it to me by the end of the day on Thursday. So in addition to these five questions, any questions that I have received by the end of the day on Thursday, I will ask that of the former thesis students as well. Um, and if I don't receive anything, it'll be just these five that I ask. Okay, moving back into Blackboard again, what I'd like to do now is um, first take a little bit of time to go through and talk about the uh, assignment for next week. So if I go into the course content and I go into our assignments folder, you'll note that the second assignment, which is going to be due next Monday, so that would be Monday the uh, 15th of February is this journal article review and you'll note basically you there you are tasked with reviewing two research journal articles now note the key terms there uh, the first is that it's a research article so you want to have an article that reports on research the second is that you want to make sure that it's a journal article so this is not a time to pick books book chapters, reports, um, conference proceedings, or anything else. 
It is specifically journal articles. And when you're looking at the nature of the research, you'll note that the assignment asks you to specifically have one that look that is utilizing primarily quantitative methods of data collection analysis and one that is utilizing primarily qualitative data and analysis. Um, you'll note that you've got between five, uh, 750 and 1,000 words. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, that works out to about two or three pages. I will be honest and say that brevity is appreciated in this particular exercise. Um, you'll note here are the areas in which you should focus upon as you are reviewing these. What I would ask you to start off with, um, today is Monday, February 8th. By Wednesday, I would like you to send me your two articles that you plan on using so that I can approve them in advance. The reason I suggest that is because every single semester there is at least one student that doesn't do this and then they submit something to me and they end up with two quantitative articles or two qualitative articles or heaven forbid what they submit is not a journal article at all but oftentimes ends up being a report or a conference proceeding or something else that isn't a journal article so by the end of the day on Wednesday you should have selected two published research articles from journals one of which uses primarily quantitative methods one of which uses primarily qualitative methods and sent those to me. Now you can email them to me directly, include a copy of the PDF as an attachment to the email, so don't just send me the link because if you find the link as you're searching the Sacred Heart um, website, it actually, when you copy that link, it's keyed specifically to your username and password. Um, so I won't be able to access if it goes that way. So make sure you download a copy of the PDF and that you send it to me. So you can hear my bird clock in the background there. It's the woodpecker, so that means that it is uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon because each of the hours has a uh, different bird that it has there. Um, anyway, so by Wednesday, send me PDFs of the two articles that you are looking to do. One final thing that I will mention about these, you'll note that I have four samples that I've posted here. Um, these are samples that were done previous semesters, so one of the things you'll find is that in most of these, they are asked to comment on things that, while it includes this list here, they also have additional things that they're responsible for looking at. So there are things that they will have maybe sections in there or a paragraph about something that you're not asked to comment on. So feel free to um, exclude that information. So when you're looking at these four samples, know that uh, while they are useful guides, that there are slight differences between the version of the assignment that these students did and the version of the assignment that I'm asking you to do. So. Looking back now at the course content, this is essentially what we are going to do today. So um, basically, if you have found this video, you either got it directly through the email that I sent to you, or when you went to the Topic 3 folder, it would have been the first thing that was there. Now, it's not the first thing there right now because I'm actually recording this, so it won't be there, but when you log into the system, it will say video colon... February 8th snow day instructions or something like that. Um, what I want you to do is to go through and you'll note that I've got videos related to each of the items that you see here. So one of the readings that you had in addition to the Fink reading this week, so in addition to the reading from the textbook, was Boot and Beal. So there's a link to the reading, which you should have already done before you came to class. Uh, here's a little video that I have that goes through and highlights some of the information in there, at least gives you an overview of the things I want you to focus upon. Similarly, here are the slides for the Fink chapter, uh, for chapter two that um, th were provided by the publisher. And then I've provided a short video that accompanies those slides with the idea of not necessarily summarizing what Fink has said, but talks about things that 
are, um, you know, that are in Fink that I would have responded to or commented on as we were moving through the actual class. Moving along, you'll see here are some slides from a presentation called Dissecting a Research Manuscript that I've gotten here. And you will note that right behind it or right after it is a video that actually it was a recording that I took when I did this class back in the fall of the essentially lecture that I gave associated with those menu with the that particular presentation. So this is the presentation or one of the presentations I would have given tonight on this idea of dissecting a research manuscript. So that's a video for you to review. Similarly, we would have done a brief APA workshop that focuses upon um, looking at how to do both in-text and reference citations. You've gotten an introduction to it now with the literature search strategies and over the course of the week I'll provide you with feedback on how well you did. Hopefully you reviewed the OWL, the Online Writing Lab uh, guidelines that are there at the University of Purdue that's in the APA folder. Um, but if you didn't, you'll be getting lots of corrections from me. If you did, you'll probably just get a couple of corrections from me. Either way, um, one of the things that I would have done tonight is I would have essentially gone over in a fairly detailed way uh, what you know how to go about doing the most common in-text citations as well as how to do the most common reference citations. Uh, the video that you see here is actually one that was recorded during the spring semester last year when I did this course. Um, moving on, we would have had two articles that we would have reviewed similar to what we did in that first class, although unlike the first class where we were just reviewing them for looking at whether or not they were going to be useful for us and how to essentially read these things or scan these things more efficiently. In this case, we would have actually started to review them from that methodological screen that uh, Fink talks about. So trying to determine, you know, is this a good piece of research? And if it is, you know, how I can use it, incorporate it into my own, um, my own literature review. So what I've done is... The first link for each of those, the one that begins art, article colon, those are actually copies of the PDFs of those articles. Immediately following each one, you'll see there's video and then the in-text citation for them. And what you'll note there is that's essentially a review that I do that goes through and looks at it with more of a critical eye. And I'm trying to pick up on the various categories that are in the art journal article review assignment. Um, now, I don't really touch that much on the last two, uh, so the category that says findings and conclusions and the category that says personal reactions, but all of the methodological categories that are up there, I try to touch on each of those as I review uh, those two articles. The other two things that you have here in Blackboard this week are two resources that I think are quite useful. Uh, one is from uh, a textbook that I used to use for this course in the past. It's uh, by a textbook by Pan. And there's a specific exercise in there in Chapter 5. Um, it's a two-page document, but essentially it's a guide, basically, for reviewing um, research. So you can look at the ideas, and they're asking you these, you know, many of the same questions that Fink was talking about and that I was talking about in the reviews, or that I will be talking about in the reviews as you look at them. You know, looking at the idea of the type of sample that they were using. Did they use multiple measures, and multiple measures meaning multiple methods of data collection? Um, you know, are they talking about validity and reliability? Do they include copies of the protocols? Um, you know, are they doing things like peer review and member checking? Um, you know, what are some of the strengths and weaknesses of it? Are there tests for significance if it's a quantitative one? Um, you know, so you can see this here again provides you with an overview as a way of basically figuring out, okay, this is how I would go about reviewing research. So it's a nice little resource. The last thing that's there, and I apologize, this is going to take me back up to the top again. Um, this is actually where we start, now that you've got your literature search done, and now that you're starting to review the articles, how do I start to put it together in a way that I'll be able to use it when I get around to doing my 
actual literature review. And this last resource here is, uh, I think, a really useful one, writing a literature review and using a synthesis matrix. So it's a short little PDF that uh, is provided by the looks of it, Florida International University, it appears to be. Uh, when it finishes loading up here, we'll see for sure. Um, actually, no, we won't because they don't have a logo on the top. Um, but essentially, it goes through and, and it's organized around these questions, which I think is kind of useful um, because they're likely questions that um, you might have and you might be thinking along the way. And I think this really does a good uh, job at addressing or answering these questions. Specifically, I'll mention that second one there. Um, basically, I just read the articles and summarize each one separately, and they start off by saying no. While they don't use the term there, what they're talking about there is this idea of integrative writing. And, and I've mentioned it in class a couple of times, and when I reviewed the articles in the other videos, uh, I'll mention it again there, but this notion of integrative writing and, and provide you with some examples of it. Um, but this is actually, I think, a, a neat little trick that they've done. So they have this synthesis matrix that they've got here. And you'll note they've got this thing over here called main idea. And really what they're talking about there is they're talking about different topics or themes in your literature. So they use a an example here. So uh, the topic that they were searching was uh, women in World War II. And you can see that some of the themes they came across was that you know, there was an alteration of women's roles because of World War II. There were a number of hardships and oppositions that women faced. In addition, there were, was opposition, um, you know, ways in which World War II did not affect women. And you'll see what they've done is they've taken these four pieces of literature and they've started pulling out things. Now, I don't know if these are direct quotes because you see there's page numbers there, so it may be a direct quote, but I don't see quotation marks. So my guess is, is that they're summarizing the idea here and then just referring to where they found it in the article. But what you've got here is you've got these four authors that all have talked about the alteration of women's roles because of World War II. And you can see that the student in question has gone through and found, in the case of uh, Cornelson, four different areas that they feel touch on that topic. Um, here's another that's, again, four areas where they felt it touched on that topic. Another four areas where it felt it touched on that topic. And Scott over here, three areas that they felt touched on that topic. And what they've done, what they would use this for is then they use this as a way of essentially starting their writing. So once you've got the chart done, you can start to see some patterns that they, as they talk about. And this helps you when you start writing your literature review. So here's a sample of a paragraph that you could have written from that synthesis that you had above. So um, and let's take a look and kind of dissect this a little bit. Um, you start off with a nice topic sentence. While the articles used in the research agree that women made advances during World War II period, it is crucial to realize that not all these changes were welcomed. So it appears they're using the last one that they had here. So if you look at this idea of WW2 did not affect women. Um, so that appears to be what they're looking at. Um, so they'll provide you with an example of this. In most cases, women face discrimination from just everyone, or just about everyone around them. Women in the workplace were often in positions of inferiority, treated as less physically able to do the same work as men did. Now, in all honesty, in a well-written literature review, I would have liked to have seen multiple citations, so more than a single author, listed after each of those sentences because now that the topic sentence is out of the way you're starting now to say okay this is what the literature says right so these two sentences here are starting to get into you know this is what I found in the literature so you'd want to give citations for these two as to where you found them you know continuing on many women were often not trained because uh, they were viewed as temporary employees who were only there for the duration of the war and you'll notice they do provide a citation here one of the things they do incorrectly based on APA APA would say the only time you use page numbers is if you are directly quoting so this portion here the comma space PP period 
120 or sorry 221 to 222 that would be removed if you were doing this along APA you know so but essentially you're starting to develop this out um, you know so these two sentences I would argue um, you know are starting to develop out these ideas and probably coming from Burley um, similarly speaking um, you would look at these kinds of these two sentences here as being coming from Cornelson. You know, women in the military face not only mental abuse but also physical harm from their male counterparts. For example, according to Cornelson, 2005, there were many instances where female aviators were injured or killed uh, due to being made to fly ill-maintained aircrafts or aircrafts that have been sabotaged. And again, you don't need that page number at the end because it's not a direct quote. One of the shortcomings of this particular paragraph is that, as you can see, it kind of ends abruptly. It actually ends with an example from the literature of one of the statements that they were ma you know, making. So you've got an example from the literature to support that statement. In a well-written paragraph here, in much the same way that you began with a topic sentence, you would end down here with a transition sentence or a summary sentence so essentially you would try to summarize the main points that you were making in the paragraph or you would write a sentence that ties the content of this paragraph with what is coming in the next paragraph um, you know so there are some shortcomings with this example but it's a really good illustration I think of how you can use this kind of organizer to help you develop okay what are the actual themes that I find here in my literature where are the examples of those themes and then turning that into you know the actual writing that you would find in the literature review so that takes us to the end of this information here in Blackboard and it also takes us pretty much to the end of the material that I'd like you to cover over um, ideally you want to get through this tonight if I count up all the time that you would spend to do this it should be roughly the three hours of class that we have um, the little bit of extra reading that's in there as you go through those two articles may take you a little bit more uh, keeping in mind that the pan um, reference at the bottom, as well as that writing a literature review and using a synthesis matrix that I just went over, are both items that are put up as resources. So if we had met in class, I would have basically just sort of, well, overviewed them like I just did for you and then told you to sort of review them on your own time over the course of the next week or so as you start to prepare for your uh, eventual literature review. So I'm closing off here from uh, my kitchen, uh, largely in part because it's got a lot of windows, so you get a lot of light building in. Uh, it helps with the, the camera and the other aspects of the recording. And uh, if you do have any questions, please email me, and email me really as soon as you, those questions come up. Um, one of the ways in which I can gauge sort of how effective um, this particular presentation of material has been in this m format that we have here is based upon the number of questions I get. Um, if I don't get any questions at all, um, that oftentimes tells me that people were so confused that they didn't even begin to know where to start to ask uh, individual questions. Um, so if you do have questions, please let me know, and, and that will be a lot of how I gauge whether or not you know we need to go over some of this again when we meet next week. Um, so, as always, if you've got questions, uh, shoot me an email, uh, call me, or, um, you know, we can arrange a time for you to come by and uh, we can meet. And otherwise, I will see you all next Monday on the uh, 15th, back down in our, uh, our lovely little room down there in 180, uh, 182. So, until then, I will see you later.